Tonight, another of our ongoing series, Personal Touch. Stories told not by our regular 2020 correspondents, but by well-known people who speak from their life experience. Some 750,000 Americans have a condition known as cerebral palsy, caused by brain injury and resulting in varying degrees of spastic movement. Their struggle to be accepted in the mainstream of life is getting a boost these days from a 27-year-old actress-comedian named Jerry Jewell, who appears on the NBC series The Facts of Life. I just don't want you letting him take advantage of you because you feel grateful to him. Grateful? I don't have to feel grateful that he asked me out. He's lucky I went. <laughs> As a little girl with cerebral palsy, Jerry had a most unlikely dream to be an actress and comedian. She wrote often to her idol, Carol Burnett, who wrote back that Jerry should follow that dream. Well, years later, Jerry developed a stand-up comedy routine, often drawing on her disability for material. She came to the attention of television producer Norman Lear, who cast her in The Facts of Life. Well, today, Jerry Jewell gives much of her time to helping others speaking to educators, doctors, and other young people. And always part of her message is simply that she is out there bringing her personal touch, even to a comedy club in Philadelphia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jerry Jewell. Thank you. Listen, um, I'm not gonna lie to you people. I'm gonna be up front. I'm gonna tell you right now that I have CP. Now, that mustn't be mistaken with MD, MS, VD. <laughs> How many people know what CP is? CP is brain damage to the motor part of the brain that causes damage to the central nervous system. So my body doesn't do what my brain is telling it to do. You see, I think I'm still. And my brain, well, I don't know. It's like, just take, everything takes a little longer, you know? But sometimes that can be fun. <laughs> oh. If I'm really tired, I sway <laughs> all over the place. I, I can't keep a center. And that's just an example of how much concentration it takes for me when I'm not tired to, to not sway and not trip as much. When I'm tired, I can't concentrate on that. Um, my mornings are the worst time. I get out of bed and I cannot walk because I'm too droggy. In fact, I crawl sometimes because I just can't find the balance. I would think the biggest misconception of CP when you see someone with cerebral palsy, like myself, is that I'm on drugs or I'm drunk or I'm retarded or all these things. And a lot of times people can't separate the physical from the mental. And people talk to me like I'm five years old a lot. And it's so hard for me because I get so frustrated because I'm not stupid. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. I was only trying to make it easier for you. What am I, an oversized poster child? I, I would have to say about 80% of disabled youngsters are stopped by the limitations that other people put on them, by the judgments that are made, the labeling, the placements, and they're not allowed to be themselves. They're not allowed to find out what they're all about. Well, I do have more experience. And I do have CP. I mean, just the fact that I'm on the facts of life is telling kids that I'm okay and that there's disabled kids all over the place that are just like me and have the same feelings and are, and, and you can need friends. I, I don't know if um, Rebecca and everybody else has this problem, but I'm still being made fun of and sometimes it really hurts. It's not, it's not like I'm, be, I'm being in uh, regular school for five years and it's like, it's different kids that are making fun of me. Well, I have the same problem you do. To this day I do. To this day people talk to me like I'm five and, I, and I'm mentally at least 10. No, <laughs> no, I, 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 I mean, I have 
the same problem, and I know, and it hurts. But I think that the more that we're out there in any field, the more that we're out there to people to see us in schools, in regular schools, and the more people can understand, because it's not that they're cruel, it's that they don't understand. Becca, you want to ask Jerry anything about, you know, dating and... Well, you said that you didn't start, you know, dating till you were like 20 and I've always thought well since you know high school is like all these guys are dating these cheerleader type people and I'm going oh my god I'm so out of it you know I, I wasn't exactly the happiest kid in high school but I think what happened I think is that I really hadn't even accepted myself or had begun to love me or accept cerebral palsy in high school, I think what I did was I kind of withdrew into myself. And it was my only way of having an emotional existence. I couldn't get it any other way. Nobody gave me anything. I mean, how do you grow emotionally when everybody just pats you on the head and says, oh, you're so sweet, and walk away? You don't grow as an emotional human being. One of the common stereotypes of disabled people is that they're born and that they're asexual and that there's nothing they can do. I mean, God, I'd love to take this person out, but what will we do? <laughs> and I actually, I have a wonderful social life and I, I do a lot of things. People with physical disabilities socially they mature a little bit later because it's hard when you uh, are constantly being coddled or uh, uh, people will avoid you to really get any sense of growth because we grow by our interaction with others and if you don't have that interaction you're socially retarded and so in my case I may have had to uh, grow in a shorter span than perhaps I would have liked to. That's why all the discos and bars now, eh, Tom? Exactly. <laughs> no comment. After John Ritter is Tom's younger brother. Well, you know, Tom, I was pretty sensitive to, to Tom's feelings uh, because the closest person in your life is your brother or sister. You know, you have the same parents, you have the same blood. And uh, Tom and I have always been able to communicate with just a look or uh, a gesture we know volumes of information just you know communicating silently across the dinner table for decades there were a lot of people who were just uncomfortable with me and my brother and his friends would interact with me and include me in their activities but there were other people that really wanted to avoid me as much as possible every so often somebody would get on his case and i remember that one time remember out in front of our house in north hollywood this guy started hassling you and he didn't know you were handicapped and and I sort of went for all him. Of, not only John, but uh, the other friends we had, too. All of them went for him. He was and a big guy. He was a bigger kid. Block, he, started, you know, he was an older fellow of 15. Yeah. I mean, the rest we of were younger were kids. Younger, he yeah. started pushing Tom around, and uh, that didn't last too long. When I was little, kids did used to pick on me. I was terrified of kids. Um, one time, these kids came to my house, and they, they wanted me to get my wagon. I got them my wagon. I didn't even know their name. I didn't know how they knew my name. I never saw them before. And I got in my wagon, and they got in it, and they said, okay, pull us. And I said, all right, because I wanted a friend so bad that I didn't care that I didn't know who they were. They wanted to play with me. That's all that mattered. And I pulled them into a field, and they, they left me there. They, I, they said, do you want to sit down and rest? And I said, yeah. He said, well, why don't you take off your shoes? Your feet must hurt. I said, okay. So I took off my shoes, and I'm sitting there in the field, and they ran off with my wagon and my shoes, and I couldn't move because there were stickers all around and a big open field. And I stood there, unable to move, totally trapped, and they stole my wagon and my shoes. You know what the hardest part of being a woman is and having cerebral palsy? It's plucking my eyebrows. <laughs> Oops, I got the wrong one. <laughs> piercing my ears. <laughs> Do you know that it takes me longer to put on makeup than Boy George? I loved it when they laughed. 
I mean, it was an incredible feeling because all my life I had been so insecure and been so used to being rejected and so hungry for acceptance. How did you feel about me joking about it when you heard me on TV on the Facts of Life for the first time? It made me feel really good, really good, because it's not like I'm the only one out there that can joke about it. It's, there's millions of other people that have handicaps that can do the same thing. Oh, honey. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, thank you. It really is overwhelming that kids look up to me in that way. Yeah, I love you, because I seem like the telephone, remember? Yeah. And I, I like to communicate that we're all the same. <laughs> I'm not anything super, anything better than anybody else. And I just proved a simple point that we all have the ability to do whatever we want to do if we really want to do it bad enough. But I think the most important thing in life is to take a risk to try. I mean, how are you ever going to know if you can do it if you don't try? And we can't always do everything. But God, I'm glad I tried. <laughs> I really am. What a marvelous personality, as well as talent. Jerry Jewell's personal touch. We'll be right back.